Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen only mode. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our VROC Initium One Plus automated viscometer demonstration webinar. This webinar will be hosted by our in house rheology expert, Dr. Stacey Elliott, along with our field service engineers, Nathaniel Grates and Damian Via Padua. The VROC Initium One Plus is the leading automatic viscometer, measuring viscosity with the highest accuracy and repeatability. Equipped with automatic sample loading and sample cleaning, VROC Initium One Plus measures absolute viscosity as a function of shear rate across a wide way, rain, temperature range, allowing for unique viscosity fingerprinting of your samples at our highest throughput, measuring up to four samples per hour. And it is now my pleasure to turn it over to our team to start their demonstration. Thanks for the introduction, Eden. Um, hi, everybody. Um, today we're just going to go over um, first with our VROC technology and kind of just a little bit of the theory and how it works. And then I'll talk about kind of just the new improvements we have between the old model and the current model. And then um, after that, Nate will take over a little bit more on the software side of things and sample preparation. So without further ado, let me just change. Oh, and one last thing. Um, go ahead and ask any questions during the presentation and uh, we can go ahead and answer in the um, in between slides or in between the presentation all right so just kind of give a brief overview um, this is our chip right here or um, on the top left corner and pretty much how it works is we flow in um, liquid into the chip and it flows in through the chip and then it have, goes across these four pressure sensors in the sensor array and based on the dimensions of the chip um, we're able to give me one second uh, let's see Oop, there we go all right All right, so here's the chip on the top left corner. Um, so these are the sensors that go across um, the chip. So as your liquid flows through, it'll exert a pressure um, across these sensors. Um, so as the liquid flows through, you'll have the highest force of pressure um, on the first sensor, and then I'll have this linear drop across all four pressure sensors. And we use this linear pressure drop to calculate the shear stress. And then the shear rate is calculated by using the dimension of the chip and the flow applied through the chip. And then we use um, the shear stress and the shear rate to calculate our viscosity. All right. So now we're just going to switch on over and um, talk about the instrument. All right, so just gonna go over a few of the highlights of the changes we made. So one of the biggest changes we made on the instrument has to do with the septas. So originally we had septas on the instrument that you would have to repeat, um, change them every 400 injections. So now we've actually changed the whole mechanism completely. Now it has like an actual arm that opens and closes and it has an O-ring that keeps everything nice and sealed and um, you only need to replace them after every 5,000 to 6,000 injections. So um, maintenance um, in lab will be a lot less. Um, and now because we changed the septum, uh, we are allow, we're you're able to use more organic solvents. Um, before the septum was very sensitive to certain organic solvents, and, but yeah, and one of the changes we made into the instrument, which we'll talk about later, actually um, is an improvement in the out output. Um, another thing that we improved is the switch valves. So the switch valves on the instrument are, we actually increased the size of the motor and we actually made replacing them a lot easier. So the switch valve is used to controlling the direction of flow of the liquid. So the 
liquid will be injected into this syringe and that'll be pushed into the chip. Um, so now switching will be a lot more efficient and less um, changing. Do you have a question, Stacey? Um, yes, yeah, so one of the uh, participants is asking if this um, <clears throat> new septum or the, the 5,000 injections is also going to be offered in the original initial instrument. So is there some way to maybe uh, retrofit or is this only uh, useful in the model one plus? Gotcha. So to repeat the question, um, someone asked if um, this injection um, with the new 5,000 to 6,000 injection can be retrofitted onto the old instrument. So right now um, we can't retrofit just because the whole um, top deck under the hood, it's um, completely different. There's like new board controls that we would have to install. So right now it's only available on the Initium Model 1 Plus. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. um, one quick question also. Uh -huh. I'm getting some comments that people aren't seeing the video, um, but just sort of the contact information. Um, let's see. Give me one second. Is the video showing up now? Um, so if someone out there could, yeah, let us know. I, I can see it online, but. Okay. Uh, some people are still saying, some are saying it's good and some are saying it's not good. Okay. Give me one second. Let me try this. All right, can everybody see? Yeah. Looks like we have a mixed response here. Some people are seeing, some people aren't. Um, so perhaps it's something about their. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I'll keep going. And then um, once the webinar ends, we'll be able to um, send an email with the recording. Um, apologize for the inconvenience there. Um, all right. So just to kind of go back. So yeah. So we changed the switch valves. Um, bigger motor and um, replacing is a lot easier. Um, there's something that before um, Nate and I, the field service engineers, would have to go on site to replace, and that would usually put a lot of downtime, but now um, you're able to switch them out um, pretty easily um, yourselves as well if they need to be changed. And then another thing we've included, um, we've actually included an extra pump and then another pump with higher pressure. So now instead of having a single pump, we have two pumps. And these double pumps will actually help with being able to clean the instrument, um, especially the auto sampler after it injects, and then also um, run your measurement as, at the same time. So that'll actually um, help reduce the time in between samples. And then it'll also, um, especially for um, EO2 chips and CO5 chips, will actually increase the speed of cleaning as well. And then another thing that helps with the double pumps is actually um, helps keep the bottles pressurized during the run as well. And then it's also um, used to help speed up the pace of the diagnostic test right before you start a run as well. Um, you may notice here that, one second, we have larger solvent bottles. So the default um, setup before on the Model 1 was 500 mil, 250, 250 mil. And then now um, when you order in OnePlus, it comes with 500, 500, and 250. And then soon we're actually gonna be able to release um, a new plate that actually supports a one liter bottles for all. And then you're able to run up to 86 samples um, without having to refill it. Uh, let's see. And then we've also included some new software um, support. So before, if we needed to ask you for um, specific information, um, if you needed help um, diagnosing something, we pretty much included a one button press that will actually export everything that we need. And it makes it a lot easier for you so we don't have to um, 
ask you for specifics and guide you through it. Um, another thing too with the OnePlus that we um, introduced, we actually introduced more flavors of chips. So instead of having a BO5, CO5, and EO2, we've actually expanded it to a B035 and also an AO5. So that'll help um, with more different applications. And if you have any questions about that, um, you can contact us and then we could have the sales rep in your area um, help you out and pick what's um, best for your application. And then last but not least, um, one thing we focus a little bit more on the design of the OnePlus it's actually the auto sampler cleaning. So we've actually added um, two ports for the cleaning. So we do one that mainly focuses on the outside of the syringe needle. And then we added another port that focuses mainly on cleaning the insides um, of the needle. So that way everything is nice and clean once you get prepared for your um, next sample. All right. And any questions on any of the new um, updates on the instruments? Before we continue. Mm -hmm. Okay, Damien, we have some questions um, asking uh, if you could explain a little bit how easy is it to change out the chip? All right, so the chip, um, so Stacey asked um, um, how easy is it to replace the chip? So the chip is actually only held on by three points of contact. Um, Nate, can you? Grab me a chip. Oh, never mind. Found it. All right. So the chip here. So we have this tube here, this tube here, and then we have this little connection point on top. So this will go into one switch valve. This end will be held by this fitting right here. And then you have this tube right here that's also connected with this um, fitting. And then this connects the instrument. So all you need to do is just loosen these fittings on the uh, instrument itself and then disconnect this chip connector and then you just take it out and then you put it in and then once you get the new chip put it in you just slide these back into the switch valves and then you may just make sure that you tighten the fittings so that way it compresses on the hose so that way there's no air leaking and then you just need to connect it back on top and then you're good to go. Okay and so there's also sort of a question along those lines. And unfortunately, the person asking this is one of the people that's having trouble with video, but um, but you did mention it's just the three contact points. Mm -hmm. So they're also asking if it's possible to change the chips on the fly, meaning automatically during run one run of the instrument. Uh, so I would say no, it's hands on. Oh, so, gotcha. So the, yeah, so the chips you would have to manually do. So you actually, we actually provide with a, a one eighth wrench that you're able to loosen the fittings with, and then you just pull out the tubing and then you just pop out the chip and then you put it back into place. Okay, a couple more before we move. Mm -hmm. um, so someone's asking, since you brought up that there's larger solvent bottles, the question is how many measurements can these bottles handle um, when you're doing uh, say the buffer type cleaning. So we got a question asking how much, uh, how many samples we can go through with the one liter bottle setups. So with the one liter bottle setups, you're able to do 86 samples without having to change it out with the buffer cleaning. So that's another thing we've changed. We actually um, made it to where um, depending on the solvents, you'll have um, different cleaning protocols. So by default now we we'll, we have an aqueous cleaning. So the cleaning will be um, buffer, aquet, which is a surfactant we use, and then acetone. And then we change the change to acetone actually um, increases the cleaning time. So that way it um, decreases the um, cleaning time. So that way we're able to um, have more samples ran overnight than the previous models, previous model as well. Okay, and then one more question before we move on to Nate. They're asking about what's the viscosity range that this unit can handle with the, mm -hmm. sort of combining all the chips, what would be the product kind of range? So one last question that we got was, um, what's the viscosity range of the instrument? So the broadest range I can say it's anywhere from 0 0.4 CP to 1000 CP. And that kind of varies on the chip type you use. So the B05 um, has the widest range, but if you're um, trying to focus more on lower shear rates or higher shear rates, that's kind of where um, your chip selection will vary. 
Yeah, technically we can manually check things a little higher, but mm -hmm. All right. All right, and I'll let Nate take it from here. Thank you, Damien. Hello, everyone. Um, as mentioned earlier, my name's Nate, also a field service engineer here at RealSense, and I'm going to be showing you a little bit uh, about how the software works and how to set up a run. So without further ado, I'm gonna switch from the webcam to the software um, so you can get a better uh, view of the software. So just give me one second. While you're doing that, can you just tell them that as these other questions come in, we'll get to them later when we have some. Oh, sure. Yeah, um, Stacy uh, also mentioned to me that um, you know, we're gonna hold off on questions until we get to a good stopping point. So you can keep asking them. And then once we get to a place where there's a little bit of downtime, maybe the auto sampler started to run, we can field the questions then. Okay. Can you see uh, my Initium screen? No. Uh, try it one more time. Is this working? How's that? Better? Fantastic. Okay. Uh, so first thing uh, I want to mention is um, you will need to fill the samples or the vials of sample. Um, I'll show you what that looks like once we get back to the uh, webcam. Uh, but the, the most important thing is, is that you remove any bubbles uh, during the sample prep process. Um, you can do that by centrifuging your samples um, in the vials. And uh, we also have a feature in the Initium where the vial rack can be temperature controlled. So if you wanted to hold your samples at a lower temperature, let's say uh, at a refrigerated temperature, while they are waiting to be loaded into the Initium, let's, if you have an extra long run, um, the option is there. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about is that you'll need to select appropriate cleaning solvents for your samples. Um, so currently, as Damien mentioned earlier, uh, the default solvent setup is uh, for aqueous samples. So the first solvent that will come into contact with your sample will be your formulation buffer, um, or an alternative would be a 0.1 molar NaOH. And this is just to help break down uh, protein residue because that's uh, the majority of what our Initium customers are measuring is proteins. Uh, however, if you wanted to measure something that wasn't water-based, um, you can always talk to us and we can help you get set up with a different set or of solvents. Um, so for example, if you wanted to test a sample that only used acetone as a cleaning solvent, let's say your sample is uh, soluble in acetone, um, we could reduce the clean to one solvent and greatly reduce the cleaning time. Um, so if you have any samples that aren't uh, water-based, just let us know and we can help um, help make protocols specifically for your application. Uh, the next thing to do would be to select an appropriate chip for the samples. So as you can see here in the software, we currently have a, where my mouse is pointing, a B05 chip selected, and you can see the B05 in the middle of the serial number here. Um, and you know, again, like Damien mentioned, we have a wide variety of chip offerings. So if you wanted to look at uh, different types of testing that you can do with Initium, uh, some examples being intrinsic viscosity um, testing, or you can look at the glide force uh, simulating your, your sample and during injection. Uh, we have chips specifically for each of those applications. So uh, yeah, just let us know if you have any specific things in mind. Um, the next thing is you will need to select appropriate protocols for your, your testing. So uh, on my screen here, you can see um, 
that we have a few different protocols. Um, the first one that you'll need to select is a loading protocol. So that's just telling the, um, the system how to um, clean the syringe and also load the sample at such as the speed and whatnot. Just give me one second. Sorry, I'm back now. Um, so the next protocol you'll need to select is the measurement protocol. Uh, so this is where you'll define all of the parameters during your testing. So you can vary temperature, you can vary shear rate, um, you can set up retrieval, sample retrieval. So I just want to talk a little bit about sample retrieval and why that's advantageous. So uh, the Initium has an option uh, for after your, um, e e let's say each uh, segment during a measurement takes a specific amount of volume which could be, let's say, 10 microliters. Um, the Initium syringe is only 100 microliters, but retrieval essentially allows you after uh, you're, you've exhausted the amount of volume that you loaded, you can then uh, run the system in reverse and pull your sample back into the test syringe so it's available to test again. So you can essentially get unlimited measurements out of a fixed amount of sample volume. Um, the cleaning protocol is the last protocol you'll need to select. So this is, uh, chip and solvent group specific. So you could see here, I only have one option. However, um, if you had a different chip type uh, connected, you would see a different cleaning protocol here. Um, so the software makes it fairly simple in terms of uh, which loading and cleaning protocols you'll need to select. Uh, the last thing you'll need to do is specify a vial location. So right now we have vial one. Um, selected as the, the vial location, and you can see that in our tray over here. We also have the option for uh, using a 96 wall plate, so you can uh, use this drop down menu and you see we have 96 wall plate available here, so that is an, uh, an option that you can set up. Um, and the last thing I want to point out here is the sample recovery box. So if you check this box, um, oops, you will have a, a, a vial uh, number here as well. So after the measurement protocol is complete and before cleaning starts, the auto sampler will pick up your vial from the test syringe. Or I'm sorry, uh, pick up your sample from the test syringe and place it back into the a vial of your choosing, which is specified here. So that way you can use your sample for other instrumentation or you know whatever you may need it for if you're limited on sample volume. Um, so the last thing that I want to uh, show you before we get into uh, starting a run is the pre-run diagnostics. So if we click this health button here, uh, this is our pre-run diagnostic screen. So I'm gonna show a little bit more detail. Um, and this is one of our test units. So these sensors are actually um, not being used right now. Um, but yeah, normally this will give you an estimates of uh, how much solvent volume you have remaining but then it would compare it to how much solvent volume the system is estimating you'll use based off the selected protocols and let you know if you if the system thinks that uh, you're going to run out of solvent volume during a run. Um, after you confirm that you have enough solvent volume, the system will then run through the pre-run diagnostics, which just uh, check to make sure that the system is in good working condition, um, that the chip is functioning, the, there aren't any leaks, and that there aren't any obstructions in the flow path. And those will be run through these three uh, these tests here. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel that for now. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and jump into the demonstration portion of the um, of the webinar as far as watching the Initium go. So I'm going to go ahead and enable our webcam one more time. Um, can you see the webcam okay, Stacy? Is it looking pretty good? Yeah. Great. Okay, so um, the first thing I'm going to do is turn on temperature control just so we can get a little bit um, ahead of the of the game here and, and start this up early so that we don't have to wait once the measurement starts. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. 
So now I'm setting every, all of three of our temperature controllers to 25 degrees Celsius. Um, you could see here that the temperatures are now rising. Uh, so, we, and just to, so you, to give you guys a little bit more information, all three of our temperature controllers are Peltier temperature controllers. So they work very precisely and they're very accurate. Uh, they're very fast as well. Um, so big improvement over um, other types of temperature control options that are available in the market. Um, so now I'm gonna go ahead and go back to our main design page and start up the run. So I'm going to go ahead and, so these are our run control options up here. So we have run, pause, stop. So I'm going to go ahead and hit run. Uh, and before, I just want to point out, um, our tray temperature is set to 25 degrees Celsius here. Um, and here is where you would enter your job name. So I'm just going to leave this as the default job name, uh, just whatever was here before, and go ahead and populate the description with the same job name and hit OK. So now we're brought to that same uh, diagnostics window that I showed you guys earlier. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this up. So right now the, the system is pre-pressurizing the solvent bottles to help speed up the diagnostics as David has mentioned earlier. Uh, previously with the uh, original initium, um, the, the diagnostics would take roughly five minutes or so to complete now it's down to maybe two or three minutes. Uh, so it helps speed up the startup time a little bit. So right now it's pre-pressurizing. Now it's asking us to confirm that we have enough volume in our solvent bottles. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And now it's going to run through the pre-run diagnostics. So I'm just gonna talk about each one of these tests really quick while they're running um, so you get a better idea of the types of tests that uh, will be performed. Uh, the check MEMS chip test is just checking to make sure that the pressure sensors in the chip are all responsive and functioning. Uh, this test that's being right now, run right now, the syringe cell leak test is checking for leaks in the main flow path. So we'll pressurize the flow path and then cut off the pressure source and measure the pressure drop. Uh, and if there's a leak, it will let you know and help you pinpoint the location of the leak to speed up troubleshooting. Um, the solvent bottle leak test will be run now. Uh, so similar to the syringe cell leak test, uh, which checks for leaks in the flow path, the solvent bottle leak test checks for leaks in the solvent bottles. Um, so it'll pressurize the bottles, again, measure the pressure drop, and if there is a leak, it'll let you know, and you can try and find where it's coming from. Usually it's just needing to tighten up the cap. So once that test is done, the next two tests will be the flow tests. And uh, like I was mentioning earlier, they're checking for obstructions in the flow path, which could be uh, from your sample. They could be fibers uh, that might've been loaded into a vial. Um, usually one of those two options. So if the system does detect that the flow rate's a little lower than it expects, or that the R squared values from the uh, pressure versus sensor position graph that Damien is showing are poor, the system will alert you. And uh, so that way you don't generate poor measurement data. Do we have any questions that have come in, Stacey? Um, yes, yeah, so there are a couple that were. Uh, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So someone was asking about possible to check the quality of the procedure, or the cleaning procedure, during an automatic run. So the question is: Is it possible to check the uh, the? Yeah, I think the the general question. How do we know that our cleaning procedure is, is adequate? How would they know? I see. Um, so one thing that you can do to check to make sure that the system is cleaning adequately is a set up a system suitability test. So you can um, have your first file that is tested be uh, a standard, and the last file that's tested be standard. And you can compare the standard values from before and after the test to make sure that the system is uh, performing the same at the start and the end. Uh, so it looks like uh, the diagnostics are finished and we're into sample loading. Um, so you can see here the auto sampler moved to the vial location that we told it to and is withdrawing the sample at the 
uh, parameters that we specified in the loading protocol. Uh, so yeah, we can watch it load for a few minutes here. Okay, while that's loading, um, mm -hmm. someone is asking about if it's possible to measure uh, waxing crude oils and emulsions. Um, so I'll make a comment. I don't know if you can hear me, but maybe you can hear me. Sure. Um, when we measured waxy samples in the past, it was very challenging to clean. It's not a testing problem, it's really a cleaning problem. So we kind of would not suggest it on the automated system for now. That would be better for the um, manual systems where you have some flexibility to pump many, many different types of fluids through there to avoid tunneling and allow for more soaking, things like that. Okay. Yeah, so Stacy, uh, I'm not sure if you guys can hear her, but um, she said there was a question if we can measure waxy crude oils or emulsions on the initium. Uh, so currently is not recommended, uh, not because uh, the initium can't test it, but it's more of a cleaning problem. Uh, so in order to be able to pump uh, a wide variety of uh, solvents at um, different flow rates and to avoid tunneling and things like that, it would be better if uh, the samples were tested on an MD rock instead of an initium, um, which is a lot more customizable. Uh, yeah. So now it looks like the syringe is filled with sample. Um, I also forgot to mention what type of sample we are testing. Um, so you can see here on our screen, we have a hyaluronic acid in, uh, in water sample. It's 0.1% hyaluronic acid. Um, so this sample is used in uh, cosmetics and also uh, to help uh, your joints. Um, so <laughs> the, it's a naturally occurring acid that's found in your body. Uh, you can find it in supplements or skincare products a lot of the time. Um, and it is a shear thinning uh, solution. So we should be able to see some shear thinning action once the data starts coming in. Um, so now, the, you can see here that the auto sampler is injecting the sample into the test syringe. Um, so that usually takes a minute or two to finish. So while that's going, mm -hmm. someone's asking, is it possible to run the system remotely by a API or IDE? Um, so the question is, is it possible to run the system remotely using an API or an IDE? Um, so we don't currently have an API available. Um, that if that was something that was um, of interest to uh, you know whomever asked the question, uh, I would recommend reaching out to uh, your sales rep for your territory. If you're not sure who that is, we can help you identify them, uh, and we can talk more about it outside uh, of the webinar. Um, but yeah, currently we don't have that capability. So um, it looks like we're about halfway through sample loading. Are there any other questions, Stacey? Um, so someone was asking some questions about handling different types of volume interactions and mm -hmm. non-determined behavior um, with the software. So I, I guess what you know, I would say about that is that's kind of something you'd want to screen automatic mode, and then based on what you learn there, you can go in and choose the conditions that are right for you. Well, so, volume fractions, and what was the other? Um, not intended behavior. Not intended behavior. Okay. So uh, the question was, uh, can you evaluate non-Etonian behavior and uh, we vary volume fractions or evaluate how the viscosity changes with different uh, concentrations, um, if I'm understanding that correctly? Um, so we would recommend running your sample using our automatic protocol, which uh, helps you choose the flow rates um, automatically without having to know the viscosity ahead of time. Um, and then once you have a, a estimate of the viscosity, which, and I say estimate just because, you know, the viscosity changes with shear rate. Um, once you have an idea of what the viscosity is, you can tailor a protocol uh, that's more specific to what you're looking for, which might be to evaluate uh, whether your sample is Newtonian or non-Newtonian, which would be setting up a shear rate suit. 
Uh, so it looks like the auto sampler has finished loading the sample. So we should see the injection port close like it just did. And we're going to jump into our testing now. So before or while uh, the testing is starting, you can see that our auto sampler has already started cleaning. Um, so that's just to help speed up the cleaning process. Um, whereas before with the Model 1 Initium, you'd have to wait until the testing was finished before you could start auto sampler cleaning. Um, so now we can go ahead and switch on the software to our data screen. So I'll go ahead and hit graph. It. I believe this data is from a previous run. Uh, but it's... <laughs> Uh, but as soon as data starts coming in, it, we'll start seeing it here, and uh, we can see how the sample behaves. Um, and just to show you guys what the protocol looks like before we get into uh, the actual data, uh, let's see which one it's called. So we have a demo. So here, here's our sample uh, measurement protocol. So you can see here, this is our, our rate column, uh, which is proportional to shear rate. And we are ramping up the shear rate. So if this hyaluronic sample is non-Newtonian, we should see the viscosity uh, decrease as we increase the shear rate, which is what we're expecting. Let's see if we actually see that. All right. So now we're into our, uh, our sample measuring portion of the webinar. Um, so you can see here viscosity versus time graph, or we had a lot of noise up front. Uh, and then once you could see here, the sample hits the flow channel, there's a spike in the viscosity, and the graph starts to reach steady state at the uh, actual viscosity at the shear rate. Um, we also have our pressure versus center position graph, which Damien mentioned earlier, um, which shows you um, how linear the pressure versus sensor position uh, graph is. Um, so once this is uh, done priming, which is another purpose of this uh, first segment, it will we'll then jump into uh, the next segment. So we'll just need to give the addition a second to catch up. So it looks like we got to our second measurement segment. Um, so you can see here in our viscosity versus time graph, our, uh, we had the initial spike in viscosity once the pump started. And then we reached steady state fairly quickly here. So bef before these solid data points over here, which are coming in, we have these uh, empty points, for lack of a better term, that don't have this uh, diamond. So this is uh, wait time, which is just allowing the graph to reach steady state before we start taking data and reporting it, which would be this portion over here. Um, so now we're on to our fourth segment. We're blazing through this. Um, and let me go ahead and switch to our table format here so we can see how the uh, viscosity is changing. Um, so our second segment here, you could see, so this is our priming segment, so we're just going to ignore the first one. Um, our second segment here is was performed at 744 inverse seconds, and we've measured a viscosity of 6.2. And as we expected, we can see that the viscosity is declining as we are increasing the shear rate. So when the viscosity or the shear rate increases to uh, approximately 1900 inverse seconds, the viscosity is 5.3. And then at 5000 inverse seconds, it de decreases to 4 centipoids. And then at 13,000 inverse seconds, we're all the way down to 3.1 centipoids now. Um, and currently, you can see here, uh, our system is telling us that it's retrieving the sample. So I just want to, uh, again, to just jump back to that point that I mentioned earlier was sample retrieval. So sample retrieval, um, you can see here on the software that we only have five microliters remaining. And the system determined that that wasn't going to be enough volume for the next segment of the measurement protocol. So it's running the system in reverse, which will bring this pusher block here uh, backwards and pull your sample back into the test range. Um, so now we're back onto measurement step six and we're running our last measurement segment here. Um, and now our viscosity is at 2.6 centipoise. Um, so yeah, it would definitely look like a, a shear thinning um, sample. 
which we can see in this viscosity versus segment graph here. So we can also change this graph to display viscosity versus shear rate. Um, and if we just ignore this priming segment, you can see a nice uh, curve where the viscosity drops as we increase the shear rate. Um, so the last two points I wanted to talk about before we go over exporting the data and reviewing it is uh, the sample recovery. So uh, I mentioned this earlier, but just wanted to reiterate one more time. Uh, now that this is done measuring, um, we're gonna, the system is waiting for the auto sampler to finish cleaning. Once the auto sampler is finished cleaning, it will then move to this uh, part and we'll draw the sample and place it back into the file. Um, we don't have sample recovery enabled right now, so it's not going to do that, but I just wanted to let you know when it would occur. Um, the last thing is uh, the cleaning process. So once this is done cleaning the auto sampler syringe, uh, these solvents will start flowing through the main flow path and cleaning it, and your system will be completely dry uh, in preparation for the next sample that's introduced. So now um, I'm going to show you how to export your data. So we have a few different options. So if we go to our data tab here, I'm gonna go ahead and go to select. So this is where we would look at our data um, briefly before we go into a more detailed view. So you can see here, we have a few different um, runs. We have a water run, we have some hyaluronic acid runs from yesterday, and then we have today's run. So in order to look at this data, I'm gonna go ahead and select. Uh, there's also a few different filtering options on the screen. So you can filter by sample name, you can search by job name, uh, the chip that you used, which is over here, uh, and you can even filter by the date that the data was generated. So now that I have my data selected or highlighted, I should say, I'm gonna go ahead and hit select. And now I can look at that data in uh, the same graph screen that you saw the data coming in earlier. So this is an overlay of all of our measurement segments and our pressure versus sensor position graphs, and also our uh, viscosity versus segment. Uh, then we have our table view. So fairly self-explanatory, this just shows the different parameters that we kept, keep track of during the measurement. But then the selection screen, we have our different export options. So I'm gonna go ahead and export this data as an Excel file. Um, I'm going to have to change this. Oh, can you see the uh, Excel file? Okay. Okay, great. Um, so here's what the data would look like. So this is just the, the table that we saw um, in the Excel, I'm sorry, the Initium software. And then if we go to the raw data tab, we can look at the um, data for each individual data point. So if you wanted to work with your data um, in Excel and manipulate it that way, um, we, you can do that here. Uh, another data option, data export option we have is exporting the data as a database. So if you did that, you can uh, use our separate analysis software called Clarity to uh, further work with your data and um, manipulate it um, the way you want to. Um, and you can also perform intrinsic viscosity analysis and uh, estimate injection forces and clarity as well. Um, yeah, so while the initium is cleaning, um, that pretty much wraps up the demonstration portion of the webinar. Uh, if there's any other questions that um, anyone has, uh, we can answer those. So if someone did have a question about um, the they were willing to sacrifice the accuracy. What would be a good version of the facility that would drive the accuracy? So their plus weight capacity was five hundred, ten point to two hundred thousand ton force, roughly two hundred thousand to five for the initial input. Yeah. So the question was, um, 
what chip would you select, you know, and uh, with the, the caveat that it's okay to sacrifice some accuracy just to get um, a one size fits all chip to uh, measure um, basically at the widest set of conditions possible um, as far as like your viscosities and your shearings. Um, with the, uh, the added, with added viscosity values of, uh, I think between 500 and 200,000 centipoise. Um, so 500 centipoise to 1,000 centipoise is no problem to do um, on the initium itself, the way it's currently set up. If you wanna go above 1,000 centipoise, uh, like we mentioned earlier, you would have to sacrifice using an auto sampler and using manual injection uh, in order to load your sample. Um, and in order, as far as choosing a chip, uh, that's one size fits all. Uh, the default chip for the initium is the BO5 chip. Um, so we can measure between 500 and 25,000 in burst seconds. Uh, that's a rough estimate. Um, and that would, that's uh, the default chip that we send out with the initium. And if you combine that with an EO2 chip, so let's just two chips now, uh, you can measure from 500 in per seconds all the way up to, I believe it's 125,000 in per seconds, which is uh, the widest range you can get on the initium. Uh, so for high shear applications we and high viscosity, um, we typically recommend the EO2. And uh, for everything else, we we'll recommend the BO5. So uh, to make that a short answer, um, the BO5 chip is the one I would recommend. And if you want to look at high shear or high viscosity, you can switch to the EO2 chip. Just a quick comment you mentioned. Sometimes when you get to the higher viscosities and you have to manually inject, sometimes retrieval is not good for those items. Sure. Oh, Stacy also wanted me to add, um, if you're looking at high viscosity samples, uh, sometimes retrieval takes a long time just because um, of the nature of measuring a high viscosity sample, it can be a challenge sometimes. Uh, so we recommend only using single pass for those and disabling retrieval, uh, or else it can add a very long time because it uh, retrieves very slowly uh, to avoid double formation. Someone's also asked about if there is a space between this software and other fluid modeling tools for more advanced experimental work. So I think right now the only way we're dealing with the data is with our internal analysis clarity. Uh, uh, so the question was um, are there options to use more advanced uh, statistical software uh, with the data that's generated from the initium? So um, the best recommendation I have for that is either using our, um, soft, our analysis software Clarity, which is designed to work with the data that's generated with the initium, uh, or you know, working with the Excel export, exported files and uh, you know, manipulating those in Excel. Uh, Non-binding cost estimates. I don't know if you're comfortable sharing that. I don't. I'd prefer to go through. Um, <laughs> okay. But people are interested in pricing. I see. Uh, We're not data. <laughs> um, so there's a question that came up with pricing about the instrument. Um, so um, I would recommend just talking to your sales rep, and they can give you more information and um, help give you a more accurate answer. Uh, just because we don't typically work with uh, pricing all that often. Um, so yeah, if you're unsure of who your sales rep is, feel free to reach out to us after the webinar and definitely get you connected with the, the right person for you. Thank you. Okay, great. Okay. Um, so yeah, I think we've touched on pretty much everything um, we wanted to go over today. Just give a basic overview of how the system works and the new features of the uh, of the Model One Plus as compared to uh, initial Model One. Um, so yeah. Hope this is helpful. Uh, is there anything you wanted to add, Damien, before we wrap up? Okay. Damien's good too. So, yeah. Um, oh, we got one more question. Um, 
is. So someone is asking about that they didn't see uh, shear stress or viscosity versus temperature and functions in the graph. But um, so maybe if you could go to the software and point out that those are things that are available. And I think you did when we were at the very beginning you mentioned that we can do temperature sweeps too. Mm -hmm. So we just, for time's sake, focused on the shear fluid sample. And what we did. Yeah. So um, someone was asking whether we can um, show a temperature versus viscosity graph. Uh, I'm not sure what the other point was, but um, oh, it's shear stress. That's right. So uh, that we didn't show shear stress or uh, viscosity versus temperature. So in the software, uh, if you follow my mouse here, uh, this viscosity versus shear rate graph that, um, oops, this, uh, viscosity versus segment number graph. If I click shear rate or temperature here, uh, I could look at how the viscosity varies with each of those. And we can vary the temperature, but for the sake of time, we decided not to do that and only vary shear rate for this demo, uh, just because temperature sweeps take a little bit longer because you have to fill up right with the new temperature. Um, and the shear stress, if you follow me in the software one more time, uh, can be located here. So we have the shear stress column in the data table. Were there any other uh, questions? Uh, yes, so there's another question about dealing with rather high viscosity samples. So in this case, they're asking about 25,000 employees or 25,000 millipascal samples. Mm -hmm. So uh, the only time we really felt like that high in the machine was when we did double cannabis oils. And in that case, the only way we were going to clean that was to then clean the elevated temperature so that the viscosity was in the door. So, so if they're going to, um, so I don't know if you can pick up on that and just yeah. sort of comment that if you want to work with us and make sure it's not that high, you're going to have to create things that flow between the machine and the elevated temperature. Sure. Uh, so the question was specifically um, asking about uh, working with high viscosity samples and uh, what that entails. So, um, the, the highest uh, viscosity samples we've measured are cannabis oils, which can get up into the tens of thousands of centipoise range. Um, and in order to, to clean those, we had to clean at elevated temperatures and make custom protocols for those uh, samples. Uh, so if you wanted to uh, measure high viscosity samples, and when I say high viscosity, I'm specifically referring to what's outside of the typical range of the initium, which is up to 1,000 centipoise. So if you wanted to measure above 1,000 centipoys, uh, we might need to do some tinkering with the loading and cleaning protocols to fit your application, but it's definitely doable. Uh, so if you have questions about your specific application, uh, again, I would say reach out to your sales rep and see if it, uh, evaluate the feasibility of it. And if it is feasible, we can definitely work with you on it. Okay, so um, I think we can come to that. Uh, <laughs> Someone's asking about trial versions of the software to evaluate. I think since we've only talked about the instrument software, they must mean that, but I don't think that's possible just for the right? Sure, yeah. So uh, the question was um, if there are, if we offer trials of the software to evaluate the, um, to the, the instrument. Um, so the Initium software itself, um, we don't typically do trials for just because uh, it's not very useful without a, an instrument connected to it. Uh, but if you wanted to um, evaluate it, just reach out to us and let us know. As far as the reassense analysis software, Clarity, um, we do offer trials of Clarity. So we offer one month free trials. It works with uh, MVROC data files and Initium data files. Um, so if you wanted to evaluate Clarity for use in your in your lab, uh, let us know, and we can definitely send you a copy of the software and uh, get you set up with a free trial. Okay, and uh, let's take one more. Uh, sure. Uh, so someone is asking about uh, sort of standard protocols of preloaded for started. Yeah. So the question was, are there what uh, standard protocols are preloaded into the software to help get you started? Uh, so currently, the, the main protocols you have when you get, first get the initium are automatic protocols. Um, so those just, um, I briefly mentioned this earlier, but they the software will pick the shear rate for you based off of the initial viscosity data during the priming step. 
if you wanted to um, set up more detailed protocols, we'll help you get set up during the training process in terms of how to set up shear rate sweeps, temperature sweeps, all of that good stuff. Um, the reason we don't include those by default is because we want to help users um, become more familiar with the software. Um, so we like to show everyone when um, and help people set up their first protocols so that way they're more comfortable with it um, when it's time to create one on their own. Okay, great. So yeah, I think that wraps up the questions. It doesn't look like we have any more. Um, so thank you for attending. We really appreciate it. Um, looks like the run is just finishing up too. So pretty good time. You can see how fast it is. Um, so if you have any other questions, again, feel free to reach out to us after the webinar and we can definitely help uh, get those answered. Have a great day.